I'm Sheila Kofer. I'll be discussing diagnostic microdirect laryngoscopy and bronchoscopy. First, the patient is placed on the operating table in a supine position. We ask the anesthesiologist to maintain spontaneous ventilation during the procedure. We always take care to place a rubber tooth guard or piece of gauze to protect the upper dentition or alveolus. A thorough exam, including palpation of the palate, is performed. We then insert the laryngoscope down the right side of the oral cavity, sweeping the tongue to the left in order to perform laryngoscopy. The ventilation circuit is then connected to the insufflation channel on the laryngoscope. A zero-degree Hopkins rod telescope is used to examine the structures of the airway also of note, we applied topical 1% lidocaine to the vocal cords at the beginning of the procedure to aid with anesthesia. We take standardized photos along the way of the soft palate and tonsils, the supraglottis, the glottis, the subglottis, as well as the upper and lower trachea. When the carina is visualized, the head of the patient is turned to the right and the camera is turned counterclockwise to examine the left main bronchus. And then the head is turned to the left and the camera is turned clockwise to examine the right main bronchus. As the telescope is withdrawn, careful examination of the mucosa is performed. We then would generally suspend the laryngoscope with a chest support. This can either be set on the patient's chest if it is an older patient or typically as seen here with use of a Mayo stand. The patient is still maintaining spontaneous respiration. An instrument called a right angle probe is used to examine the larynx and palpate for a laryngeal cleft. That's shown here palpating the top of the cricoid and to check the depth of the interarytenoid tissue. Secretions can be suctioned to optimize visualization. Here we are going to be sizing the airway using standardized endotracheal tubes, which are then connected to the anesthesia circuit. We then ask the anesthesia colleagues to increase the positive pressure starting at zero and increasing until 30 centimeters water pressure is reached in order to test for an air leak around the endotracheal tube. Normal leak would occur between 10 to 20 centimeters water pressure. This would be an appropriate sized endotracheal tube for the patient. We can consult a chart to see if there is any evidence of subglottic stenosis. The chest support and laryngoscope can be removed and the depth of the anesthesia tube is checked. Important key points would be we always recommend to check the equipment before the patient enters the operating room. Always use a sponge or tooth guard to protect the upper teeth or gum. We recommend to examine the airway in a systematic way from proximal to distal and then carefully again as the telescope is withdrawn. Finally, make sure to perform a complete airway exam including palpation for a laryngeal cleft and sizing of the airway.